I listened to the Interactive Brokers earnings call that was presented last week and there was a range of insights in there that I think highlight what's going on broadly with the stock market around the world, but in particular point towards economic trends as well that I thought might be interesting to share with you. The first thing is they summarized their business strategy as automating as much of the business as possible, continuously improving and expanding what we offer while minimizing what we charge. And I just thought that's business strategy in 2024, automation, value proposition, as well as minimizing what you charge if you can in a highly inflationary environment. The second thing is the secular global investment trend remains that investors allocate some of their portfolio to securities in their home markets, but a more significant portion to overseas securities, particularly in the US. Again, I think that that's something that we really see here in Europe is that a lot of people want to invest in their home market. So maybe it might be an Irish market or in Belgium or in the Netherlands or wherever people might be. But invariably, I do see that people also want exposure to the US stock market. Partly that might be because you deal with a lot of really big household names. But the other reason is, of course, is that the US stock market has been really striving ahead of the European and other stock markets as well, not just in recent years, but in, in recent decades. The characteristic of 2024 seems to be carrying on from 2023, which is equity concentration, equity return concentration to be specific. It points out in equities, the Magnificent Seven once again were the main drivers of the US market performance, contributing nearly all of the S&P's gain this quarter, with just two stocks, NVIDIA and Apple, responsible for three quarters of that, which this time around it's saying that if you had bought the S&P 500 ETF, for example, you still would have got the returns, the very significant returns that have happened here today, but they've been coming from a small number of stocks. And even within that small number of stocks, a subset of those small number of stocks, namely NVIDIA and Apple, have been delivering the lion's share of the returns. However, what I also think is very interesting, and this points towards the economic trends here, is just the sheer volume of growth of interactive brokers' accounts, the number of people who are opening up accounts. And I think this points out just how much people want to maybe start investing or engage in investing on their own as distinct through the guise of a financial advisor, perhaps. But this has been a trend that I've seen because I've been watching the interactive brokers earnings calls now for a couple of quarters. They point out that they've made added 178,000 new accounts this quarter behind only the meme stock days of the first quarter of 2021. And also, this is at a pre-tax profit margin at an industry leading 72%. So they're obviously well able to make money on those accounts as well. But it's also interesting to see what people are buying. Like at the moment, a lot of people are talking about the fact that there looks like there's a tech rotation out, which means that people are selling their stocks in tech stocks and instead moving them into particularly small cap stocks so that then those companies are likely to be more positioned to have a disproportionately high uh, reaction to a, a, an interest rate cut. But the Interactive Brokers Earnings Report says stock share volume generally increased in tandem with clients gravitating towards larger, higher quality names and having relatively low trading in pink sheets. So they would be seen as the more speculative side of the market and other very low price stocks in their largest markets. So people are moving towards the bigger names with more quality, with stronger potentially earnings and cash flows, etc. Uh, it's very different to what we saw in uh, certainly around February of 2021. Now, also as well, where geographically where these are coming from is uh, they say that their accounts and client equity once again grew fastest in Europe and Asia. So it's people in Asia and in Europe, particularly driving the growth of those new accounts. Next, I think this is interesting because this is something that I've also seen, particularly Amazon, moving forward on. They've started onboarding so-called family and friends accounts where somebody tests the water and then makes sure everything's working. So I think this is something I've seen happen in Amazon for the past couple of years is being able to share a list with other friends, for example, of people who might be interested in Christmas gifts or in certain type of shoes or in certain books or whatever. Amazon has been really good at enabling us to buy together. And this is a trend that we're also now seeing in interactive brokers, but it's particularly interesting to see how can automation and other technologies enable you to have and give access, viewable or otherwise, to certain areas of your life. And I think when it comes to things like GDPR and privacy, there's an interesting balance there. We want to be able to share information in real time digitally with other people, but in such a way where it makes privacy sense as well. 
Now, they've also, and I think this ties in with the focus on automation in today's world, they also said that they have introduced conditional orders on their mobile platform, a much requested feature that can be set up to initiate or cancel an order based on a variety of triggers. This is a theme that I, I've been talking to a lot with business audiences around Ireland over the past year, in particular Northern Ireland too, is understanding how to automate business, understanding how to under how to enable your users, your clients to be able to get the information that they need in a self-service type of basis. And understanding automation and triggers and reactions and so on like that can be so, so, so helpful. We have been using Airtable in our own business over the past couple of years, and we're really developing our capacity to do this uh, you, with our own technologies to help people help themselves. And again, we can see this in interactive brokers too. Now, also, this is uh, an area of cost that I wanted to talk about. Uh, interactive brokers have auto FX, where they say clients can place an order for security without manually performing a foreign currency conversion. They only charge three basis points in comparison to a full percent by their competitors. And second, they only charge it in a trade that a client makes that results in a negative currency balance. So if people have a currency already, they don't charge at all. The reason I'm bringing this up is to point out in your business or in your investing, if that's what you're listening to this conversation for, is to look at the costs of currency. Often people say, I want to buy, for example, Apple and NVIDIA shares. And they're off they go and they buy those shares and they buy those at the best best available, best execution price they can. But they don't look at how much it costs them to buy the dollars in the first place. And that is an area that Interactive Brokers here is making a point to say that if you do something like transact the, cur the currency first without that cost, well, then it enables you to save on the three basis points uh, in other ways. So this is more a proxy that I just wanted to point out that look for the hidden costs in your business or in your investing and root them out because often there is a way in which to deal with this very, very simply. Uh, in addition as well, another trend here, now I'm not going to elaborate much on this because I don't have the time, but in this particular video, they talk about the growth of uh, contract volumes and options rose 35% over the prior year quarter. And then they delve a little bit later on in the Q&A, then they talk about the fact that a lot of that is driven by zero day to expiration options. Now, uh, the options and the options market is what I actually studied in my final year thesis of my degree. So I know a lot about this and I've transacted in options over the years and basically they are the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell a stock. And again, I would have to take a much longer video to explain to you what those are. But what I'm interested in is just the growth of them. And specifically, what I'm very interested in is the growth of them when it's zero day expiration, which means that people are basically betting on something happening in the stock market within the day and using an option to do it. Now, when I was studying this, there was so much focus on time value and the impact of time value. And for anybody that wants to go and look into this further, you'll see all about time value and theta, etc. But if you have zero day to expiration, that comes out of the equation and then it's all down to the change in the stock price and the volatility underpinning that. It's just an interesting development. And similarly, they also talk about Forecast X, which has designed forecast contracts, enabling investors to identify opportunities, hedge and speculate on outcomes of published economic data along with global, global climate values. In summary, what that is, is that is giving people an ability to make a bet or hedge or speculate or in some way gain exposure to the changing nature of climate values. Now, there has been a really big trend in the markets over recent times around ESG, environmental, social and governance factors. And there's ETFs accordingly and all that sort of thing. But this is, I have not seen this before, where there is a development of such a product solely related to um, betting on published economic data along with global climate values. And in the options state or in the earnings call, they do talk about this being potentially as big as the options market in the future. So that's definitely something to watch. Also as well, they say with the advances in AI, it should be easier to achieve our goal of scalability without adding new personnel, but it's not easy to do. This ties back in with our strategy at the beginning about automating as much as possible. Scale and AI certainly can help, but how to be able to do that and balance it so that you don't compromise in customer service is a very interesting point. And then the last thing I want to point out is their competitive advantage that they have on offering interest rates on cash balances. This is definitely something that is making greater waves for their business in the US. But if you are somebody that is looking at this in Europe, you do see that there are stringent terms and conditions applied to that. So it is certainly one to watch with the small print, but a lot of interesting things in last week's earnings call from Interactive Brokers.